Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and I hope you had a good weekend. It's been a while since I've done a video here, so fingers crossed that you're still enjoying my content. So I just realised my battery is low on my laptop which is recording the audio for this video so if I disappear that's probably the reason. So um, today I wanted to discuss uh, a few things. Um, I've had a request for a video on belly button piercing, um, changing the piercing, and um, just seeing my piercing in general. And I would love to do that, except that I am very self-conscious about my stomach, and I am torn whether to show you the piercing or not, but I can show you some photos. So you'll be able to see the photos, and I'll show you, um, I'll tell you how I take out my bar, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's the same way most people do it, so that is what <laughs> that's what I will probably say in a video. So this video is going to be just seeing some photos of my piercing and um, seeing what it was like when the bar was too short, when it was swollen. Um, I've found a few photos from after I got the piercing done, and I just wanted to talk to you about that. So the first photo I'm going to show you is basically um, the photo after I got it done which is what I took on snapchat to send one of my friends so as you can see probably the uh, photo um, is of my belly button piercing with a uh, bandage over it which I got from the piercer which was amazingly comfortable prevented any snagging and anything on my clothes after I left the piercers now um, I bought my own um, plasters or the sort of like coverings um, from Sainsbury's but I had a reaction to the adhesive which in some photos that I don't know if I have, if I do I'll, show, I'll put them up here, um, you can see there's a red square around my belly button sort of framing my piercing where the adhesive irritated my skin. So obviously that's not good so be wary when you buy products like that. Obviously put one somewhere that's not going to irritate you too badly to see if it will, if you have a reaction. If you have a reaction, stop using it immediately. Clean the area very gently with gentle soap and um, put anything like Savlon or germaline or anything that has antibacterial properties and potentially a numbing agent as well, which is why I used germaline to numb the itching because the itching was terrible. And my old friend Rachel um, had a steroid injection, I believe, in her shoulder. No, it was a it was a, a dye injected into her shoulder for an MRI scan, and she said that she reacted to the plasters from the hospital. So I don't know if it's like a common reaction, but just be wary that you can react to plasters, even though they might seem quite tame, you can react to the adhesive. So just be wary of that. So um, I wore mine from the piercer, which worked out fine. Um, I wasn't allergic to that one for some reason. And I left that on until it basically started to come off. The glue was starting to wear off. So it was a couple of, it was a couple of days, possibly 48 hours and left it on while I slept and um, everything. Be careful of it when I was showering. I just washed my hair and just basically did a body wash without getting it wet, which can be tricky, especially on the uh, the torso, so on the abdomen. It can be quite tricky not to get that wet in a shower, so just be very careful of that. But um, keep it on, but obviously let it air. Make sure you get plasters or adhesives that are pretty well aired so that it allows the piercing to breathe so it doesn't get um, moist or damp or it collects moisture or anything like that because then it will get infected. So be aware of that and um, yeah so basically when I take out my piercing I usually take off the top ball by unscrewing the ball and then gently pulling the piercing down underneath out of the piercing that way. and. Um, basically not doing it, pulling it up the other way where you can bring up um, debris and dirt and bacteria up into the piercing. So always try to clean, obviously use clean hands and obviously don't change your piercing unless it's properly healed. Mine is still healing properly. I 
didn't take that advice and it is healing slower and slower the more I change it. So I try to keep the bar in, but just change the top and the bottom ball, which is what my piercer said was okay. So I did that for the first few months. It's been nearly nine months now. So it is practically healed. It still weeps a little bit every now and again if it's snagged, but it does have a keloid at the moment, which I am trying to be very careful with touching it, moving the bar, changing the bar, etc. But um, I'm just trying to be careful of it to let it heal properly. Um, the way um, this picture that I'm going to show you now is basically um, my piercing pretty much shortly after I had it done. Pretty much instantly the same day. Um, no, two days after I got it because I took the bandage off, wanted to see what it looked like, and it looked like this. So you can see that the top and the bottom ball are so close to my skin. And you can understand why that after another day it started to swell. You can see how easily the top and the bottom ball could have sunk into my skin and started to embed, which is not good. And if you've seen my previous video, that is what happened to me. My piercing got so swollen and I'm plus size anyway, so the bar was too short for my piercing. It's fine for a healed piercing, but not when it's healing, because it would flare up every now and again, and still does, so I have to change the size of the bar to make sure it doesn't embed again. <laughs> so that is that photo. Um, then the next photo is from Instagram, where I posted about body positivity and being happy with my piercing, and you can see that it has a new piercing, a longer bar in it, which I got changed at the piercers, and you can see that it is red and swollen, but you can't see the redness because I turned the photo black and white because it looked gross in normal colour. So that is what um, it looked like and it still kind of looks like that now just with a bit of a keloid on the bottom. I would show you up close on how I changed my piercing but as I said before I'm not very comfortable showing my uh, stomach off on camera. I will take some updated photos and will post them on this video and if you want to see more updated photos of my piercing or me, go to my Instagram page. It's um, Rebecca Fox. Just type in my name or Rebecca L. Fox, author. And I'll put a link right here in the corner of the screen. And I will also link it in the description for you to follow. You can check out my Facebook, which is Rebecca Fox, author. And um, just follow me on Twitter, which I'll also link in the description, just to keep up date with all of my comings and goings, which is a lot of comings and a lot of goings because I am so busy with a new unit that I've started at university. I'm speaking to a new writer, an actual published writer, um, as a mentor for my work. So that's going to be exciting. I'll tell you how well that goes. In the next couple of weeks, I'm almost on Easter break. So I have three weeks off for Easter. So I'm going to be bored. So I'll be making a lot of videos, hopefully more content on my belly piercing and just generally more writing content and just generally more more videos now that the sun is out. So we have lovely weather here in Britain, so you'll get to see a lot of that, a lot of more poetry about the summer and the spring coming and it's just going to be wonderful. So if you want to follow along with that, please like and subscribe and then ring the bell to follow along with my uploads, which is a bit uh, sporadic at the moment. but. Be, um, be patient, you, there will be more. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.